victory belongs to Jesus. And I'm going home. I could just preach on those two songs right there. But God has given me something else to speak about today. And before we get into God's word, let us uh, have a word of prayer. If you all will bow your heads with me. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. You've been so merciful to us and you have truly been so kind. You looked after us when we did not look after ourselves. You protected us when we did not know how to protect ourselves. You called us out by name. We didn't call you. You sought us when we didn't seek you. What a merciful God, what a merciful King. You're worthy of our praise, our glory, our honor. Please, Lord, forgive me of my sin, the thing I've done wrong that did not please you. Wash me from my sin that I may be used as a vessel for your glory today. And may the honor fall at thy feet because you alone are worthy. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We put our trust in him. Amen. That song is absolutely wonderful. I thank God for this privilege, this opportunity to speak his word. Uh, we thank God for, for Pastor Ford. We give honor to him. Uh, not every pastor uh, is willing to give that opportunity for a minister to speak at his church. And Pastor has so graciously given up a whole Sunday on every month. Amen. So we will get to the word, present it to you, and get out of the way. Amen. If you all could go with me to the book of 2 Kings chapter 6. We're going to look at a few verses. I will give you the theme for today. The topic is God, please open their eyes. Amen. God, please open their eyes. Amen. 2 Kings chapter 6. We're going to go through a few verses with you, giving you the history of this. We know that King uh, the king of Israel and, and, and the prophet Elijah had a little conflict because every time the king wanted to do something, the prophet Elijah would tell him, you're not doing it. It's not according to God's will. So they had a little enmity. But we're going to look and see in God how God through his word reveals things to us and shows us that he's worthy to be praised and that you can be confident when you trust in the mighty God. First Kings chapter six, go with me to verse eight. I'll read a few verses to your hearing and then we'll touch on those verses. Please say amen when you're there. Amen. Second Kings chapter six, starting with verse eight and it reads as thus. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and the king of Syria took counsel with his servants saying, in such, in such a place shall be my camp. And the man of God sent unto, king of, unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of and saved himself there. He didn't do it once. He didn't do it twice. Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, will ye not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? So I've read to you all these verses and there's a lot of things going on in here. So we're gonna keep reading, but then we're gonna come back to it. Verse 12 says, and one of his servants said, none, my Lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel, Tell it the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. How is Elijah telling, Elisha, telling the king of Israel things he's not privy to? He's not there listening to the king of, of Syria telling and make, is it making the plans of war against the king of Israel. How is this happening? So if the king of Syria, this is beautiful the word the way God does things. The king of Syria is like, which one of you all is a spy? Somebody in my group is a spy. 
Somebody here, somebody in my army is going and telling the king of Israel, like it says, in such and such a place. He's telling them if we're going to attack here. He's telling them when we're going to attack here. But it's amazing that if you look at the servants, the servants said, none of us are spies. But Elijah, the prophet of God, God is revealing these things to him. Amen. Let's keep going. All right. And he said in verse 13, go and spy where he is that I may sin and fetch him. OK, oh, Elijah is doing this. Let's go get this Elijah. Right. We're in control here. We're the king. We're the mighty army. Let's go get Elijah. And it was told him saying, behold, he's in Dotham. He's not hiding. He's where he always is. You all with me? Yeah. Therefore sent he thither horses. So now get the horses. They're going after one man now. So get your horses. Get your chariots. Why do you need horses and chariots for one man? He's telling you who it is. And a great host. So all of these people, the king of Syria, is getting together to go and fetch the prophet of God. And they came by night. So now they've got all of this host. They got chariots. They got horses. And then they're going to come by night. One man. All right. And compass the city about. So now they have compassed the whole city. And verse 15 says, And when the servant of the man of God was risen early. So the prophets in these times, they had servants. They had people that they taught. Elijah had Elisha. And Elisha has this particular servant teaching him about God's laws, God's will, and hearing the voice of God. So the servant is in the house with Elisha. The servant comes out, does his normal chores, and he looks up and he says, what in the world is going on? Why are all of these chariots and horses come past all around about us? And the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth. And behold, a host come past the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we go? This is good. We're into the story. We're into it. We're, we're seeing what's going on. Verse 16 says, And he answered, This is Elisha. Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Yes. 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 Elisha, I don't see anybody. Come on, so how, when you begin to see how the Lord works things out, yes. when you were walking in your life and doing things that people didn't understand why you were doing them, yes. how you had the strength to walk away from ungodliness, yes. Because you trusted things that they did not see. God had opened your eyes to who he truly is. So now you put your faith and your trust and your confidence in him. So now Elisha is about to reveal through God's prayer, how, through prayer to God, the things that are going on behind the scenes. How come when you can go into a car dealership and you get a decent rate, you don't get the 10, 12, 11, 14 percent that they're trying to dump on you. You God gives you favor and you walk away with a better percentage than the person that just left out of here. Y'all not with me. See, the, the, the title is God open. God, please open their eyes. See, a lot of times God is doing things behind the scenes for us we don't even know. We don't know and we don't acknowledge God because we don't see it. Our eyes have not been opened yet. But the Lord, it, in life, one, one day, one time, God allowed them to see that it was you working behind the scenes. There are times in my life where I've, I've come back and I've reflected and I realized that, God, you were doing it the whole time. Boy. Man, I said I, I said I was going to talk. I wasn't going to get all loud. And Man, we want to we want to walk right on through this. But I know that there were times in my life 
when God protected me when I didn't deserve to be protected. I didn't know what he was doing in the moment. But when the Lord began to take the, if you think of an onion, an onion has a skin, then it has all these layers. I don't like onions, but I know that's what they, they have. But if you look at the onion, you take this before you can enjoy the fruit or any fruit. You have a skin. You have peeling. You got to take all of it off. Then you can enjoy the fruit. And then the, and, and that's how I feel about my eyes. God took the scales off my eyes and I can begin to see that when I was in high school, he was protecting me around the, the gun bullets and around the, the gang affiliation and around all the things that I was walking through in my life. There are certain things I did, but certain things God wouldn't allow me to do. No, I have to stop you right there, brother man. But I didn't understand that God had put up the roadblock that no, son, I can't allow you to do this. I have other plans for you. And some of us in our lives, we've gone through things and God has blocked doors he did not allow to be open because he had plans for you. And he still has plans for you. Why? Lord, open my eyes. So here we go. We see Elijah. Elijah's at peace. He's not worried. He trusts God. And he answered, fear not. I'm saying to you today, fear not. God knows what you're going through. Don't fear. For they that be with us, Christ with us, is more than the world. The world system, Satan, everything, all of the peer pressure that you're going through, children. God is greater than all of that. You don't have to fear. For they that be with us are more than they that be with them. We're not looking at, we're not focused on what we see. Faith, we're talking about faith. It's the substance of things, hope for the evidence of things not seen. The devil wants us to focus on what we see. To trip us up. So that we can stay in a rut. But we focus and we, we're trusting on God. More, 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 more. Think that God is more. Verse 17, and Elisha prayed and said, sometimes we've just got to pray for people. When the child doesn't get it, pray for them. Ask the Lord to open their eyes. When the parent doesn't get it, children, pray for them. Ask the Lord to open their eyes. When a boss doesn't get it, Pray for them. Ask the Lord to open up their eyes. When racism tries to block you, stop and ask the Lord to open up their eyes. Some people are that way because they've been taught to be that way. They don't know any better. And you are some of the things we are because we've been taught to be that way. And sometimes we don't come off right. But the Lord may need to open up our eyes. God, please do this. Praying and praying as, praying as I'm preaching. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may what? See. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. And God said, the scripture says, and he did what? He saw. Sometimes you wish you can just take the word of God and plant it in people's hearts. But see, you would get the glory. You all hear me? We want to get the glory, whether we know it or not. We want the glory for this thing. And the thing we've got to fight, the Bible says, watch out for vain glory. And a lot of times the words we say at that moment may not fall into somebody's heart because we create little soldiers. I don't want no little soldier. I want Christ to have all the soldiers. Because when you're down in the midnight hour, when you're hurting and you can't be consoled, you need Jesus. You need the Holy Spirit to lift you up. Oh, Man, I, haven't even, I haven't even looked at these notes. <laughs> I 
And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. Beautiful. And he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Mm. See, these chariots were angels. Things that we can't see behind the scenes. Why didn't that car accident cause you more damage? Why are you stuck in that traffic light at the time, even though you're frustrated, and then later on down the road, you see that someone's car flipped? We don't get it. In school, they taught us a, a timeline. You got the past, you got the present, you got the future. It's a straight line. So that's how we look at time, flat, linear. Right. Right. But see, time is really not like that. It's more curved. It's three-dimensional. You all with me? Yes. So if time is three-dimensional, I add another dimension to it. Now you've got time that it looks different. So it looked more like a curve. So you got past, present, future, but you've got God. And because it's not linear and it's curved, God sees all time at once. So God knew why this man was setting up plans against the children of Israel. God knew where his plans would be, what city he had planned to set up a host. And God revealed a piece of eternity to his man. Y'all yes. yes. not with me? Yes. People say, and I, I, this is why I was going to tell a brother of mine, we were talking, and I just, I said, I'm going to hold it. But I'm going to reveal it now. When you look at God, a lot of times people say for eternity, we're going to serve God for millions and millions of, year, uh, uh, millions of years. So people are like, okay, millions of years. But see, we focus on time. Our minds, we don't really understand what that means. See, when you think about time, you've got to understand. Don't think about it as years and this. Think about God and God is outside of time. So we won't be serving him for many, many years. We'll be serving him for eternity. See, we won't be limited by time anymore. The Bible says that we will see him as he is. So we're going to step outside of time. Y'all not with me. <laughs> We're going to be outside of time. So when you think of years, see, the Bible will release us. It will set us free from the bondage of what we go through in this flesh. That we won't focus so much about having heaven on earth. We will live with God eternally. We will be changed in the moment, in a twinkling of an eye. We shall be changed, and then we shall be like Christ. New bodies. The Bible shows how Christ appeared in a moment of time. See, what we go through out this shell, this flesh, it limits us spiritually and mentally. The whole world is groaning. Looking to be changed, looking for the, the world to be rejuvenated and renewed by Christ. Man, Lord, you took me somewhere totally different. But we're going to step outside of time so we won't think in years anymore. Oh, that's fascinating to me. Let's go over to, I got a couple verses for you in 2 Corinthians. We'll touch base. But keep in mind that when you're going through in life, and you don't really understand what God is doing, know and trust that God is working it out for you. And if you don't know and you don't see and you don't understand what God is doing, ask the Lord to open your eyes. Why? God will open your eyes. He may not do it for you right at that moment. But if you ask God and you have a sincere heart, God will work that out for you. Second Corinthians. How much time do I have here? 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1 through verse 6. We're going to read a few verses to you. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 through verse 6. Please say amen when you're there. Amen. Therefore, seeing we have received this ministry. What ministry, Paul? The ministry as we have received mercy, we faint not. So what ministry is he, if, if, is he talking about? He's talking about, if you look at 2 Corinthians chapter 3, he was giving the delineation between the old law 
and mercy. He's trying to show that we are we're different now. We've changed. We're not focusing on doing the law, the regulations. We've been freed. Now we present to you the ministry of the gospel or the good news of Christ. Christ died when you didn't deserve it. This is the ministry that he's speaking about. Seeing that we have this ministry, past four, we have this ministry, the ministers, we have this ministry, we present it to you. Those who know the gospel and have received it and those who have not. As we have received mercy, so he's saying, he presenting the ministry, as he has received mercy, understand that we faint not. That means that he's been going through. Paul's been going through a lot. So he's trying to explain to these, uh, the Corinthians I go through just like you, if not more. And in the ministry that I have, now new levels, they say what? New levels, new devils. So Paul was de dealing with different devils than the people that he's preaching to were dealing with. They didn't have to go to jail. They weren't beat with stripes. They didn't have to go before the, the, uh, the, uh, before uh, Rome, uh, Cyrus, who, who was Rome? Rome, Pompey, whoever it was, forgive me. But uh, the Roman emperor, forgive me, my mind is slipping me. I know it is, but it slipped my mind. The Roman emperor, they didn't have to do that. But here he is telling them that he's got the ministry. He understands that God has given him this ministry by mercy, and he understands that he is not fainting because he trusts God. Verse 2, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. So here's the ministry. Here's I'm in the ministry. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. And this is one of the things that made me not want to get in the ministry because I saw so many crooked preachers in my neighborhood. They, every preacher's got to have a Cadillac. I don't even like Cadillacs. Not saying anybody who got a Cadillac, not knocking it. No, if you like a Cadillac, you like a Cadillac. It's a good call. I just didn't like it. But that's the that's that's what was going on. So. Look at verse 2, it says, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. So we've gotten rid of dishonesty. We're not preaching to be dishonest with people. Then it says, not walking in craftiness. Okay, we're not trying to be crafty or use the word with slick. We call it slickness. We're not slick with God's word to try to manipulate people to get their money, Minister Woods, to sell their tithes for $50. After you finish preaching, cut up your tie and give it... For fifty dollars, right? A prayer tie. But I've renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. So I'm not trying to manipulate and get people to, to become their hero to try to have to, to, to just use people. But by manifestation of the truth, I'm living in the truth. My desire is to walk in the truth. I want to be transparent with the people. When you see me, that's who I am all day long. Whether I got on a suit, whether I'm playing basketball, wherever I'm at, I should be doing the exact, I should have the same spirit. But by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. So people are watching. Verse 3 says, but if our gospel be hid, here we go. God, please open their eyes. How does this apply? How does this scripture in 2 Kings and 2 Corinthians come together? We want people's eyes open. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. If you are not living or not presenting the gospel, the lost lose. But see, you were once lost. So we should have so much sympathy, care, and concern for those that are lost. That's right. That's right. Because if they die, I talked to you earlier about eternity. If they die, they will be eternally separated from God. In hell, suffering, torment for the rest of their days. Eternally. So if the gospel be hid, it's here to those that are lost. Look at verse 4. In whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them which believe not. So he's blinded their minds, their, their eyes and their minds are closed to the gospel. But it's the devil that's behind the scenes doing it. But look at how he does it. He comes after the mind. So you wonder why the enemy is using the school system to get our kids. 
Because he's coming after their minds. So if he can get a hold of their minds and teach them that evolution and all these other things, humanism is okay, he's got their minds. So when you're speaking and presenting your gospel to them, it's blocked. Because their minds are closed. Because the enemy has taken hold of their minds. So we got to pray that the Lord would open their eyes and open their minds to the gospel. You all with me? In whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ. He's blocking the glorious gospel. Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon them. So when they don't have the gospel, they're in darkness. So the enemy wants to keep people in darkness. Why do you think when you want to go to the club, you're always in a dark place? (laughs) Cut off the light. That place is too bright. You don't even like the flickering light. that You're blocking from the flickering light that comes around. Think about it. It's darkness. The enemy is comfortable in darkness. Why do people, when you're in the world, you want to go out late at night? Real dark. You all with me? Because the glorious light of the gospel has not shined on you. And then once the glorious light of the gospel shines upon you, you can come out in the day. You don't have to hang out in the night. Call them night crawlers. (laughs) Amen, amen. Who is the image of God should shine upon them, shine unto them. Verse five says, for we preach not ourselves. We don't preach ourselves. We don't lift up ourselves. We don't glorify ourselves. But Christ Jesus, the Lord. And ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. The minister is the servant of God. We We should not be kings. No preacher up here is looking to be a king. If you got a preacher that's looking to be a king, get out of that church. Get out of there. We're not here to be kings. You can't wheel over the pastorship to your children. God has to call them. Isn't that right? It's not a business. But it's God's business. But you can't treat it like the world's business. Oh, man. That's a whole nother door. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants, For Jesus' sake. Verse 6. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, had shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. That's why we preach. God, shine the light in our hearts. He revealed himself to us mercifully. He shined the light of his love in our hearts. He opened our eyes to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. How? How did he give that light? How did he show the knowledge of his glory? He did it in the face of Jesus Christ. God bless you and God keep you.